tie a toll-free popham today. As you can see, I've selected and prepared all my materials and I have them laid out in front of me. The hook I'm using is a vintage hook that I stripped an old fly off of. And the underbody is made from Pearsall's stout floss. So to start the fly, you want to have your thread at the top of the tag. And this is small oval silver tinsel. And I've stripped uh, the tinsel from the core right at the tie-in point to help make a smoother transition. So tie the tinsel in on the back side of the hook and take your time and make nice good edge to edge wraps all the way down to the base of the tag. And then go back up and as you go back up just make sure again they're nice and tight edge to edge wraps. Uh, the thread is pretty heavily waxed um, that helps to just keep the thread where you place it and also so the tinsel has something to stick to as you wrap it. When you start winding your tinsel up just take your time again make sure they're edge to edge wraps really tight and as you wrap it you can see I put my uh, index finger on my right hand to hold the tinsel in place so I can shift my hand back and uh, take any twist that gets put into the tinsel out. That's referred to as putting something into catch and that's one of the primary principal things that you have to learn when you're tying in hand is to just become second nature to immediately put things into catch as soon as you you wrap it. So when you get to the top of the tag, put down a couple wraps and to hold the tinsel down and then I hold the, the thread in my left hand as you can see really tight and then pinch it, uh, the tinsel on the back side of the tag um, with your index and thumb so you hold it in place and then I put a, uh, a bend into the tinsel so that way I can tie it off on the back side of the hook. Again, strip the tinsel from the core and you can put a little saliva on it just to help you know, mat everything down so it's not uh, frayed up fibers sticking everywhere. And tie it down with a few good wraps and work your way right to the back of the, the tag. Take your tail and as you can see I put it into position with my left hand but then hold it in place with my right and then take a turn over it. Just hold it in place, make sure it's sitting right. I find it easier to do it like that. Um, you might not just try it and see which way works best for you. If it's not sitting in the right place, take it off, put it back on, or you know, just shift it and adjust it just a little bit with the butt if you need to. Put down a few more good wraps just to hold it in place and work your way back. And select uh, two Indian crow feathers or appropriate substitutes. And uh, you can put them on one at a time or both at the same time. Just try it either way, see which way it works best. So again, hold it in position with your right hand and take a turn over it. And I just put one turn down just to hold it in place while I put the other one on top of it. It might shift, but you can just you know wiggle the butt back into place and have them both sitting on, right on top of each other. And make any adjustments that are needed to get them sitting in the right spot. Make sure you keep your tension on your thread at that point too. And then I'll put down another wrap or two and really, really cinch down on that thread so that way it sits in there pretty tight so that way I can prepare my ostrich. So strip the base off the hurl and <clears throat> you want to tie it so that way the flue is sticking up in towards the top of the fly and tie it in on the side. I tie it in pretty much, uh, if you're looking at the front of the fly from the eye, it would be probably about the 7 o'clock position or so. You can tie it in on the back side, you can tie it in on the front. It doesn't really matter. You're not going to see the tie-in point anyway. And the reason you want to tie it in so that way the hurl is sticking straight up is as you, you turn it and pull it to wrap it, um, it will twist and then that way all the, the flue will be sticking towards the back end of the fly. Make sure your first wrap is at the very back of the body, right in front of the tinsel and the Indian crow tie in points. And really good edge to edge wraps.
and then hold it and catch and bring your thread around and up and behind it and then I grab the tip with my mouth and just hold it tight while I put tension on with the thread. Once so you have it tied in with a couple good wraps, trim that out. And another good wrap or two just to hold it in place. Next, uh, prepare a piece of small gold oval tinsel. And if you're looking again from the front of the fly towards the eye, um, it would be at about the 5 o'clock position is where you want to tie that in at. You tie it in there so when you go to wrap it, it comes from behind the fly and it it comes at the right angle so you get nice, you know, evenly spaced wraps. And then take a piece of orange silk and tie that in as well. I tie it in just above the tinsel. And uh, the floss I'm using is uh, Pearsall's Tag Floss. Um, it's a pretty heavy floss, um, very heavy by comparison to JEC. Um, it's a, it's not a multi-strand floss, it's just a single strand floss, but it's a lot of strands in that. And uh, I'm not sure why it's not used more. It's actually a really nice floss, and um, I actually really like the colors that it's offered in. They're um, very close to what is you see in plates and on vintage flies, and I believe that's probably the floss that they use most likely or something similar. So nice edge to edge wraps, tie everything in, push down that tip of the waist end of your floss if you need to. And when I get to the end of the first joint, um, I tend to put a couple wraps down just so I know where I need to stop um, the, the floss at. And you might need to put on a new piece of silk, and I tie that in right at the where the hurl will be, so that way it's uh, not going to be noticeable. It's not going to create a lump or a bump in there near floss section. So just tie that in and put down your couple wraps so you know where to stop your floss and make it off. You can see as I go to wrap the floss, I, I twist it a little bit, and then that helps to split, uh, spread and splay open the f uh, fibers of the floss. And you'll see I do that little kind of wiggle move as I wrap up once in a while, and that's just to splay out the, fi uh, the strands of the floss more. And take your time, and um, you can, uh, generally you want to try to do, you know, edge-to-edge -edge wraps with floss with, you know, minor overlap but if there's for some reason you know the floss has a thicker section in it because it is a natural product and it's not uniform in size um, you sometimes need to do more of an overlap to compensate for those thicker sections and you can also build a taper into your body sections by just overlapping it a little more than you normally would and just take your time make sure your floss is nice and tight and work your way up to the end of the first joint if you need to go back and fix any mistakes, just do so. You can see there that the thread isn't unraveling from the body because there's quite a bit of wax on there, so it's holding it in place. And again, to reiterate, just make sure you, you twist the floss once in a while to take the twist out of it and make it flatter. You can see I put it in catch every time that I have to let go of it. And once you get to the end of the joint, bring the thread up and behind the the floss and take a turn there and then uh, hold the tent or take another wrap and then hold tension on your thread and uh, pull your, your floss up to the side. Take your turns of your tinsel and uh, try to make a you know nice evenly spaced wraps going up. 
and put it in catch, bring your thread behind, and tighten up. And same thing, you know, take your two turns, hold the thread nice and tight, put your finger on the back side and put a bend into the tinsel. So that way you're tying it off on the back side. And that helps to keep the tension on the tinsel as well. So there's the first section done. And now we're going to butt it with a couple Indian crow feathers on top and on bottom. So set your feathers on and get them about where you think they're going to need to sit. And again, I hold them with my right hand and take my turns of thread with my left. Just easier for me that way. stray fibers, so just trim that out. And take your bottom Indian crow feathers and pair them up. And because of the thread tension, sometimes what will happen is those feathers will, will roll and they'll shift. So to compensate for that, instead of tying them off, say, at the 6 o'clock position, uh, or tying them in at the 6 o'clock position, I kind of tie them in at say like 630 so that way as I tighten up it rolls them right into position on the at 6 o'clock so that way they're sitting on the very top and bottom of the fly and you know if there's any little minor adjustments you can do afterwards too by just manipulating the butts and making them sit in the right uh, section Once they're sitting right, take a couple more turns just to hold them in place and bring your, bat, your thread back to right at the tying point. Now that you're ready, prepare a hurl and offer it up to the side with the flue facing towards the top of the fly. Again, nice etched edge wraps. You want a good foundation to lay that hurl on top of. Any lumps and bumps will cause the hurl to shift and pitch at an angle, and you don't want that. You want to have it all uniform laying straight back. Really tight edge to edge wraps with the hurl. You do not want that shifting. You don't want any looseness in there, otherwise it will shift and just look a little funky. Once you get it to the point that you like, Bring the thread up behind, grab it with your mouth, tighten it up. Once you trim it out, you can also moisten your finger and stroke the hurl barbs back just so they all sit nice and pretty and lay down flat. And that's it for that section. Mm -hmm.